So what the employer would do is simply continue to pay them through the home country payroll okay. and operate an arrangement known as tax equalization. Hi, and welcome to Crow Corner with Business Solutions. Today I'm joined by Kenny. Kenny specializes in cross-border hiring and deployment staff. Kenny, we've worked with several businesses in the past, um, and uh, some of them were in the construction industry requiring you know, specialist expertise. We're talking about you know, uh, setting up data centers and um, planning for you know, railway networks, design and planning. What are the things that they needed to consider in planning you know, for those employees? Quite a few uh, considerations to think about here. So you've got immigration, and you've got uh, employment law, uh, compliance and you've got compensation as well. Uh -huh. So the first thing uh, for sure is ensuring the employer is meeting its employment law requirements. Okay. So this will apply to employees transferred in from abroad just as much as it would apply to local employees employed by the UK company. Okay. Um, so this can mean for example checking yeah, the necessary immigration permits are in place checking is a written employment contract in place because in some countries like the US it's not necessarily required to have a written employment contract and uh, checking they understand the uh, employee entitlements in the UK for example termination rights, statutory sick pay, uh, parental leave entitlements, things like that. Okay so pretty much everything that you would do for a normal UK hire just make sure that you know we're considering all of those areas. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> these employees will be entering the UK for the first time invariably, so they won't be familiar with these local requirements. So it's just absolutely very important they speak to a specialist uh, in this area to make sure they're fully compliant. Yeah, and um, you know, the, those are the areas that we cover in a lot of our scoping calls with international clients as well. Because just like you say, they're tapping into an unknown territory whilst they know that their employment laws in their jurisdiction, they're not familiar with that in the UK. Oh, absolutely. Then there's also the employment tax requirements. So the UK company will have to have a payroll in place. Just to say as well, a UK entity can get a UK payroll up and running quite easily. Oh. But even if there wasn't a UK entity in place just yet, uh -huh. um, it's still quite easy to get a payroll up and running in the name of a foreign entity. So what do we do when you know the, the, you have to set up pension schemes for these people? You, you know, do they stick to the UK pensions? Do they keep their homeland pensions? You know, how do how do they navigate? Not. That's a good question. Uh, so generally when someone comes to the UK for a period of time uh -huh. and then the plan is to complete their stint and go back to their home country, mm -hmm. the employee tends to want to maintain that link with their home country, yeah. continue to pay their home country pension contributions, home country social security contributions throughout the period of that secondment. Mm -hmm. So what the employer will generally do is keep them on that home country employment mm -hmm. contract and second mm -hmm. them to the UK as opposed to terminating the home country employment contract and then moving them onto a local contract with the UK entity. And if you structure it as a secondment, then this uses the employee obligations in the UK mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, if the UK has a security agreement with the employee's home country, then it should be possible to obtain a certificate which exempts both the UK company and the employee from paying UK Social Security contributions. What was the certificate and how long does it take to apply? Typically it takes between four to six weeks to obtain the certificate, so okay. it's definitely best to apply well in advance. All right. And then what about the employees take home pay? Uh, how does that get impacted? Because obviously they're used to their pay package. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of the time the employee will want to continue to receive a net pay that's comparable to what they mm -hmm. would have received if they didn't go on to common if they remained in their home country. And then, so what the employer would do is simply continue to pay them through the home country payroll okay. and operate an arrangement known as tax equalization, oh. which generally means the employer is agreeing to pick up the UK taxes on the employee's behalf. And the taxes that the employee pays is similar to what they would have paid if they remained in their home country. So tax equalization, I would say, is, is quite popular. Um, because it basically means the employee has a better idea of what they will receive in terms of the net pay. They don't have to worry about the impact of another country's taxes. Just keeps their affairs simple. 
takes taxes out of the equation. Thank you, Kenny. You've shared a lot of information today, and um, certainly areas of the business you know you need to take into consideration when they're considering deployment of staff to the UK. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I look forward to seeing you next time.